not yet. Okay, great. I don't have a you know presentation. Um, I'm just going to go impromptu. Um, you know, I want to. take uh, you know, a little time of yours today to make you think about your perspectives on product, your pro perspectives on services, and uh, think about whether you know, there may be a different way to think about both of these things. I feel uh, a company like Mu Sigma got, did not get started by, with a vision uh, or fantastic execution. It got started more through a belief system. And the, the, uh, at the center of this belief system is this perspective that you know, everything about uh, the world is changing on a constant basis. And uh, the only thing you can uh, pretty much say is that change is actually accelerating. So um, we, you know, I probably, uh, you know, may be quite unpopular uh, with you guys uh, after what I'm going to say. So I just want, uh, you know, the NASCOM guys to know that I may need security while going out. So here is my perspective. I feel that you know, we all in our lives have a perspective to, to be different, especially sons, have a perspective to be different from their fathers. Right? And, and that uh, has led us to do things and be motivated in very, very different ways. You know, I, I know that because I have an 11 year old, you know, and the one thing he does not want to do is be associated with anything like analytics or big data or decision sciences. He's very, very sure that it's pretty uncool. And in his case, uh, you know, uh, my wife is also in this space. So it's double uncool. So, so I thought about that, and I said, wow, you know, if, why is this happening? I think there is a little bit of individualism in all of us, you know, and we want to exhibit that individualism in one way or the other. And in some ways, we even want to express that individualism so much that we want to impose it on our children. Right, and say that you, you lead my life and uh, you know, lead something that I could not do. You know, Khalil Gibran says it very interestingly when he says that you know, children are nothing but life's longing for itself. That is, life wants to be there and it wants to, you know, it wants to extend itself. And we are nothing but, you know, our extension, children are nothing but our need for our extension of ourselves beyond, you know, a certain point of time. So very, many of you may not agree with this, but some of you may at least start thinking about it. And that's my intention here. So from that perspective, from an India perspective, who are our fathers? You know, we've done very, very well, 1992, um, you know, we, we got some sort of liberalization taking place. By 1996, you know, we had a big boom in the services industry. You know, I went to school at a, uh, you know, a place called College of Engineering, Gindi. You know, and you know, the best thing I did in my engineering school was that I met my wife. And I met Ambiga when I was 17 years old. You know, proposed to her pretty much immediately. Uh, you know, I was precocious. Uh, I had also pr proposed to my French teacher when I was seven years old. So uh, Ambiga pretty much took some time. She's the cautious one, and she accepted that I should at least meet her parents. Uh, by the time we were about 20 years old, and there was a condition that I should get a job. 
Me and Ambika shared the same rank in our class. She, she was the fourth rank, and I was also the fourth rank. She from the top and me from the bottom. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and I was like, man, I mean, how do, how do I get a job now with fourth rank at the bottom? You know, there's, everything's happening, 1996. It's, it's a very different time, I mean, from now. And here comes our savior, Tata Consultancy Services. <laughs> TCS, TCS comes and he says, and keep in mind, this is before me going to the US, so my accent is a much more Indianized, okay? I, I believe I've not become so, uh, you know, American while going to US. But at that point of time, much more Indianized. And, you know, walk into the uh, interview, and the guy basically says, with these grades, how can I give you a job? And I tell him, sir, you're giving job to everybody else, sir. <laughs> And mark my words, you know, I was like, he laughed. He laughed, and it was a genuine laugh. It was an authentic, we connected. <laughs> and within that moment of connection, you know, I had got a job. <laughs> and walked out, and I was looking at all those guys who had really worked very, very hard in the last four years. <laughs> and I was like saying, boss, I am enjoying this. Not because I got the job, but because you guys worked so hard during the next four years and both of us have the same job. But you know, the beauty of what I'm trying to tell you is that what TCS Infosys Wipro did was pretty amazing, cognizant. These guys are quite amazing. They are our fathers, you know. They gave us something on which we can build on. And sometimes we don't give, say thank you enough. We like to, you know, we like to pull their legs a little bit, like we do to our fathers. We, but deep down when you look at it, in the end of the day, they are our fathers, and we may go through our face of saying, I want to be a product company because I don't want to be a services company. <laughs> well, well, you should want to be a product company because you want to be a, you want to be, you want to solve a problem, not because you want to be a product company. And that's been my problem in the world, is that your intention comes from something negative. Right? So, my perspective is that there's a little bit of that going on. And I believe if we want to unleash the power of what can happen in this space, we got to be thinking about the problem space, you know, and thinking about what is the right way to solve the problem for a particular pro problem. We should think about the why first, then the what, and then the how. Right? If the how becomes the first thing, I want to be a product company. You know, then you're thinking about it the other way around, right? You have a complex with your father. And that complex with your father is causing you to do things in weird ways. And you better grow out of your baggage. So that's my perspective. I could be wrong. You know, if I don't go out of this, uh, you know, room alive, I just want you to know that I was, uh, you know, I might have been attacked here. So hopefully the TV cameras and all are capturing this. Wife knows at least where to capture my remains. Right? So, so that's my perspective. And uh, with that as a start, that you want to look at the problem space. And what's the problem space? The problem space is defined by the fact that change is a constant, and change is happening faster and faster and faster. Now, in that world, 
where change is happening faster. I can hear somebody's noise, voice here. Somebody's talking here behind or something? Yeah, OK, thank you. If, uh, if change is happening on a faster and faster perspective, what does that mean? Let me, let me throw a few things out which you guys will um, appreciate. Knowledge management is key to companies. Pretty same. If you want to do something, make sure, if you want to do something that is very complex, make sure that you have a few experts in that area. Pretty same. If you are creating some intellectualism, then protect it with intellectual property. Protect it so that you have it and not somebody else. Make sure you create IP. Products are built with IP. Pretty same. Then I'm going to tell you that what Mu Sigma does is pretty insane. And I'm going to tell you that it is built on the fact that change is happening on a constant basis. And in a world where change is happening on a constant basis, it's not knowledge, but rather learning that is important. And learning is d by dt of knowledge. On a constant basis, knowledge is getting destroyed. And new things are coming through. And if you are focused on accumulating that knowledge, Rather than thinking about destroying it, you're not thinking about learning. The person just wouldn't stop. Um, you know, maybe he can be here. The, the second perspective is that it's not experts who are going to change the world, but rather experiments. And experts are the, have the least propensity to ask, keep asking questions. And therefore, you need to be thinking about experiments on a constant basis. And the third perspective is that the new IP is no more intellectual property, which is closed, but rather interdisciplinary perspective of mixing multiple disciplines together and connecting and completing ideas rather than competing on ideas. Because ideas want to complete themselves. They're all like swimming, saying, who should I link with so that I can complete, them, complete myself? So this perspective of change, which is learning over knowing, extreme experimentation, and the new IP, which is interdisciplinary perspective, means that you have to think the problem space has to be thought of differently. I look at the problem space the following way. There's a hot pav bhaji plate. Okay? In this hot pav bhaji plate, Ravi identifies with it, I guess. Yeah, no. so, <laughs> me too. I love a hot pav bhaji plate. I'm half from Bombay and half from Chennai. So in that hot pav bhaji plate, which is the world that we live in, you know, you throw a few drops of water on that hot pav bhaji plate. What happens? Zzz, it sizzles. And you're gone. The problems go away. That's the world in which we live in. Problems are coming and going, coming and going. Right? Now in that hot pav bhaji plate, we have to figure out solutions. Things are happening. Change is constant. Change is accelerating. The pav bhaji plate is very, very, very hot. You have some old pav bhaji left. You have to mix it with some new vegetables. Mix it and say, serve, serve the guy. Right? And by the way, that old pav bhaji is actually quite tasty. Right? Try it sometime. It may not help your stomach, but different. Right? So, so this is what is happening. And guess what? Our fathers who are in the services space, the systems integrators, they have built a lot of things. They have built a lot of systems. Business and technology make up systems integration. And all the process has made them less agile. You know, my alumnus consulting, business and math, extremely flexible, but not very scalable. I can solve problems at $300 to $500 per hour, but that not many people who went to school at University of Chicago or Harvard or Stanford who then went to uh, work at McKinsey or Booz Allen. So that's not scalable either. And then math and technology have created, quote unquote, what is today's products. Right? And products are not flexible because as the problem changes, the product cannot change. Because the problem is thought of and the product basically is decided this is the product that will solve the problem. If the problem shifts, you're screwed. So in a world which is the hot pav bhaji plate, you need a combination of scalability, flexibility, and agility. 
you need a case, you know, you need a mixture of math, business, and technology, and it's no more products versus services, but it's, I believe, a harmony between products and services, not just a balance, huh? People say balance. What is balance? Work-life balance. It's work or it's life. You can have work or you can have life. Which one do you want? Work-life balance. It is work-life harmony. Work and life making each other better. You play guitar, I play piano, you know, drums, and if you play guitar separately, I play drums, and then you play guitar separately, and I play drums, it's not fun. If we figure out a way to mix with each other, that's when it's really fun. Because learning happens when you're around the problem. And you can't be around the problem in the pure product world. Services helps you be around the problem. Oh, the problem is hanging, I'm hanging around the hoop, I'm hanging around the hoop, and hey, I have the ball, I can basket it. You know, on the same time, you know, scalability doesn't happen with pure services, easily. So you need, in a world where you need scalability, and you need constant learning, you need to have a harmony between products and services. That is the point that I'm trying to make. I have 40 seconds. I'm not going to go over it, unlike you, uh, Naveen. So, <laughs> so that's all I have to say. And anything more, I will answer as questions. So 27 seconds back to you.